All right, you guys. So today I got some 3D printed uh, bottle cage mounts that mount to the saddle rail. Um, this is my first time experimenting with STL files and getting them 3D printed. And apparently this is the company that they contracted out to to print, it, print my product. So, uh, well, it's not my product. I actually got it off uh, another website. Uh, I'll probably link it below if uh, once I get a chance. But yeah, uh, let me open the box and we'll see what, how this goes. I actually bought two different types of mounts. I will be showing you guys, which I thought were pretty nifty. Um, I love these guys who created stuff online and they just, you know, they put it out there for everyone to try out. And it was very, very, very generous of them to, yeah, so it comes with this packaging to share with us. And where I ordered it from was Craft Cloud. And their pricing is relatively reasonable uh, compared to like say Shapeways. I would say Shapeways is more expensive, period overall okay so here's a uh, card for joster uh, jostech.com i guess they did the printing so next time maybe i'll just go straight to them to get it taken care of um yeah and they got a little coupon there so it's uh that's like 10 off so if you guys do go to their website <laughs> All right, so here's the one where it is, um, oh wow. That did not come out as clear as I thought, but that doesn't matter. Um, here's the one that mounts directly to my uh, Bontrager lights. Um, you'd have to actually take the original piece out of the Bontrager light and slip it into here. Uh, let me see if I can grab that for you guys. All right, so basically guys, uh, it usually came out of this band here. Um, I don't know why they changed it. The older ones had a threaded piece in the middle. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but the newer ones seem to not have that threaded uh, piece in the middle there, as you can see. You literally just slide it out of this rubber here, and then you just, what happens is you stick it in the direction that you want it to go, and slide it right into there, as you can see, and you can bolt it down. I'm assuming you can do the same with this, it's just you're going to want to use some sort of metal bolt and um, it'll, it should stay in place. Uh, it's not the shortest, so I'm guessing you're going to need something at least. Uh, so we'll call that, well, let's just say it starts right about here. So you're going to need something that's about at least 10 millimeters long, I would say, in order to get it in there properly. But as you can see, it is pretty nice overall considering these were I got these printed for like I think less than 15 bucks for two of them uh, one of them's for my buddy and um, basically this is going to be mounted by it's going to sit on top of the rail and basically be strapped down by zip ties so um, if you guys don't want to scratch up your rails you might want to put a little bit of tape in the area over the rail um, around the rail uh, that you're planning to zip tie these down to it also helps to hold it in place a little bit more and not slide around potentially because since the rails are are a smooth metal usually most of the time or if you have carbon rails maybe that's not so much an issue but if you want to if you want to save the surface of your if you want to protect the surface of your rails that would be good to do um this was supposed to have some sort of logo on there but i guess the detail was so small specifically for this printing company uh it ended up not being as clear Anyways, um, yeah, this is the first mount that I bought, so yeah, this is one of those for my buddy. Hopefully it turns out nicely. Alright, so danbailey.net, I guess that's the guy who made it. Thanks, Dan. Looks fantastic. Um, I thought it was going to be a little bulkier due to the design, but it actually looks just fine. Um, and these, this one uses M5 nuts and bolts. And it's pretty straightforward in design overall. Um, yeah, let's see if the M5 nuts that I've got will fit properly. I actually bought nylon ones, so obviously you can't tighten them to an, to an extreme or anything, but uh, considering what kind of weight I'm gonna be putting on these, it'll probably do just fine. And this is not gonna fit 
by my hand right now. Chances are I'll probably have to put a nut uh, screw through there in order to tighten it through. But I will definitely follow up with, with a video regarding that real quick after I play around with this for a little bit. Alright, so I was able to get my nylon nuts in there. <laughs> it's always fun to say that. Um, what I ended up doing was threading up, threading on the, the bolt of the nut a little bit and then uh, basically just holding it upside down against the soft surface and pressing down on it like that and it pretty much positioned itself pretty well and slid, sl slid right in. There you go, that's the right choice of words. So one thing to keep in mind for this one in particular, oh, yeah, sorry guys, off center, is that um, it depend depending on how tall your rails are, mine are gonna be probably 10 millimeters, so it's gonna be about that tall. So you're gonna need a long, pretty long bolt for that sort of thing. So with that being said, 10 millimeters is probably about there. So this should probably do the trick. And I believe these are, how long? Oh, it's Jeff's ruler again. Um, yeah, these are 20 millimeters, man. So just to let you guys know, in terms of clearance, if you guys are gonna use these saddle rails, uh, saddle rail mounts, just remember if you have carbon rails, it might, you might need a, tall, a longer bolt. Um, yeah. And then other than that, oh yeah, I guess I gotta slide this one in, huh? Oh, I also did notice that the clearance on these, on, on this particular one, then it's very, um, very tight. <laughs> and, uh, it's not an issue in my opinion. It's, it's great, honestly. Um, but you might just need to thrill, thread some stuff through and then kind of just let, keep going at it for a little bit and it might, uh oh, as you can see, it does cause an issue here, but that's only if I have nothing in it. So what I would recommend you guys do if you guys are planning to use this is get something to mount to it for now, because that something is probably not gonna have the same thread diameter issue. So say one of my other mounts, it's just sitting around run it through the best that I can. Oh, there you go. It's already kind of easy to push in now. So hopefully, and then just run it through a little bit. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't strip the threads on your uh, bolt because, well, it's not really, uh, whatchamacallit, it's plastic. So anyways, um, plastic I used was PA12. I forgot exactly what it is, but uh, for my purpose, uh, it should do just fine. Uh, that reminds me, I still gotta put a nut on that one, so. Anyways, uh, other than that, you guys, uh, these things probably weigh like 11 grams or so each. Let me go to scale. Forgive me on the dirtiness of my scale, but we cook, so that's... Oh dang, so this is actually heavier than I thought it would be. 14 grams for this guy. Um, that's including the nylon bolts here, so I I don't know how much they weigh, but they're literally super, like n almost nothing. Um, this actual mount without the zip ties, nine grams as well. So expect your mounts to weigh anywhere, if you, if you order something like this, expect them to weigh anywhere from nine to 15 grams. Uh, there you go, 13 here. Not even sure if that was accurate, because earlier I think it said 15, but maybe I misread it. Um, yeah, so... Other than that, you guys, uh, it really wasn't very difficult to get this done. Um, I think I went to Thingiverse or something like that, the website, to get the STL files. You just search for what you're looking for. And then basically uh, after that you download the STL file and then you upload it to uh, one of the 3D printing websites. Uh, the one I used was All3DP and uh, they have so many different materials you can choose from and it's very quite convenient. So uh, I would definitely
Um, I'll definitely recommend their website. Uh, very easy to use. Uh, you have all kinds of options, um, all kinds of places that do 3D printing. And uh, if you don't need anything terribly strong in material or expensive, honestly, you can get something really nice for a very cheap price. Otherwise, um, just know you're experimenting with these sort of things and you're depending on someone else's design who probably might not do this period on a, on a like, you know, might not do this for a full-time job. So you have to take into consideration that it might not be a perfect product. So yeah, that's pretty much, I think my last little bit of input regarding this. All right, you guys. So that's what it looks like with the danbailey.net uh, mount. Uh, it could be a little more filed down in certain areas, you know, just to give it a cleaner look, but Overall, it is pretty good. I ended up changing out the nylon bolt on the GoPro mount for some reason. I don't know why it strips so easily, but it did. So, uh, just a regular metal bolt, uh, or nut, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you guys the other mount in a second. All right, you guys, this is what the other mount looks like. I'm not going to zip tie it down because I actually don't like the design for one thing, in the aspect that it goes with the angle of the saddle. So right now the light actually angles downwards a smidge. And it's probably not a game, like it's not gonna end anything. It's, it's not a problem per se, because I could probably either file it down on one end of the mount on the inside and have it flatten out a little bit, or I can maybe put some tape on the backside here, you know, um, Basically, I can either file it down on this end so that it angles a little bit upwards, or I can put a little tape on this end so that it's just stacked higher on the back side. So it's not the end of the world, and I do like the way it's super clean. Um, it's not bulky like the other one. As you can see, with the zip ties, it'll still be very, very not noticeable. It's also a little more, it has a little more clearance than the other one. And uh, you can also rotate the mount to put the light vertically or horizontally as well. Uh, however, understand that you're gonna have clearance issues depending upon your saddle on how, you, if you can, if and how you can remove the light if you position it to slide up in order to come out. So yeah. So I just realized I used two different rotationals, uh, two different perspectives on the video here. So it's gonna suck when it com comes to consolidating this one because in the beginning of the video it was horizontal and now it's vertical so or the other way around anyways landscape and portrait you guys get the idea anyways i tried to end up i ended up um doing putting a little bit of tape underneath here underneath the uh side here because i don't really want to file it down or anything on the inward side since it's tilted and as you can see it's pretty straight now um and then i put a little bit of tape on the rails because i just prefer not to mar the rails with the zip ties. And as you can see, it's pretty clean overall in the look. Um, from a distance, you can't even see it pretty much. Light mounts pretty nicely. It's, it's a little higher than the GoPro mount, which is what is something I like, because I prefer it to be a little more uh, integrated and look like it's seamless. Um, yes, the zip tie mounts, I guess I can move them inward a little bit. So now you can't even see those at all which is great, I almost can't see them. So now it's clean. Um, yeah, if you guys used electrical tape, it might look a little bit better than my tape, but I had some s stuff stuck to mine, so that's, yeah, my bad on that on that side. Um, yeah, overall, pretty happy, uh, considering these things don't cost anything compared to Shapeways products and cost overall. Like over there, you'll see the mount for $26, but by the time it comes to your door with all the processing fees, it ends up costing you $40, $50, uh, depending on what material as well. And uh, for this purpose, thankfully, I was able to use the PA-12 plastic again. And uh, yes, it's a little bit flexible here and there, but it does the job for what I need. Anyways, um, yeah, as you can see, works great. Otherwise, if you guys have any other questions or comments, I'm saying it again, feel free to leave it below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this content, subscribe. Thanks for your time, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.